Hey game devs, welcome back. This tutorial is part of a series how to become a game developer. Currently I show you how to create game assets like a 3D character. Last time we started modeling the torso. If you missed that, click on the link in the description below. Today we start modeling the head of our 3D character and combine it with the torso mesh. I will show you all the necessary shortcuts step by step. So let's start. References are still our prepared background image. In my side view, I purposely consider the shape of my head without beard. I will model the head first and afterwards the beard. I select a new layer so that I can focus on the head without torso mesh. The basic form of the head is a sphere. So I press Shift A and add a UV sphere. The sphere is fine with 8 segments and 8 rings. Before I start to deform a fresh basic form, I am able to adjust location, rotation and scale in the left column. Left click and hold the value you want to change and drag the mouse cursor to the left or right to rise or lower the value. For my head mesh I want to start with a nice edge flow as well. For this I rotate the sphere on the y axis to 90 degrees. As mentioned I can adjust the scale so that the sphere fits perfectly to the background image reference. Go to front view and edit mode. Select all faces on the left side and delete them. I make this because I want to mirror the face mesh with a modifier. So add the mirror modifier. Ok, nothing happened. The reason is that the object was rotated. The values let the modifier mirror the object to the wrong direction. How can I fix this? Remove the modifier from the object. Keep the object selected and press Ctrl A. This opens the apply window, where I can apply rotation and scale. The rotation and scaling values get resetted. Now I can try again adding the mirror modifier and everything is working well. It is very important to create a nice edge flow for a face. This is necessary for low poly characters like this one and as well for high detailed animated faces. Think about where you want to set your vertices, how the edge should build up your face. Drawing the lines on your concept would be a nice planning and it is as well a good training for imagine volume. I show you my way how our character faces are built up and how many vertices we use for a head. We have a plan and we have a sphere. Go to edit mode and start to deform the mesh. You can activate proportional editing by pressing the key O. This mode gives you a range of influence of your selection. To change the radius of range, press G to move vertices and scroll with your mouse wheel. Well, back to modeling. The circle in the middle should be the center of the ear. The edge next to the ear should be our cheek line. The edge between my cheek and the center line should define the nose back, nose starting and ending position, mouth and chin. Place everything till you get a very rough blocking of your head. If everything is ok, add more geometry to give it more detail. The edge flow of a face is different than our UV sphere. It's time to rearrange the edge ring between my cheek and the chin part. 
To tidy up my edge flow, I want to create new vertices and merge with other vertices. For this, I move words along the edge till it hits the next vertice. It is possible to auto-merge vertices if they are overlapping each other. Go to the ground column, click on mesh and enable the third option auto-merge editing. Slowly we get a result of our rearrangement. Time to add further edge loops. The forehead needs as well an additional loop. In fact all horizontal loops lead to the ear center. It is sometimes necessary for low poly meshes to let the loop end earlier. For example, end it on your head temper. We haven't planned any facial expression deformation. This is the reason why I model his default or crumpy expression right now. I add an edge ring to the eyebrow underside and another loop from the cheek leading to the tip of the nose. I have created now a nice edge flow around the nose. Select the inner faces of the nose and extrude them. Delete the faces which are created in the center. There is now a little hole in the nose. To bring the vertices back to the center we need to enable snap during transform. This mode let us snap to volume, faces, edges, vertices or increments. Care about which selection you have activated there. We want to snap to vertices. So select as well the vertices you want to snap. Hold left click on X axis to only move it along this axis and move the mouse to the vertice on the center loop. Repeat this process with all vertices which are not centered. Start rearranging again. Next step is to start combining the head with the torso mesh. Delete the faces where the neck should start and prepare the geometry. I start to extrude the edge by the center loop. Select every single vertice and snap it to the torso mesh vertice where the neck should connect with the back. The neck around the throat area is very tiny. However, we need to adjust this area as well. I try to find the transition step by step and adjust both meshes which are still not merged yet. The ear is very simple. Extrude the center circle and rearrange the vertices.
I am pretty satisfied with the head mesh now. I start to prepare the geometry for the moustache. Extrude those faces and adjust them. For the massive, majestic beard, I create first a plane. Extrude and adjust. Repeat. Extrude and adjust. Again. When you hit the face geometry with the first edge, everything is well prepared. It's time to merge those two meshes. Select both meshes and hit Ctrl G. In edit mode select everything with A and then press W to open the special window. Tap on the fourth option. Remove doubles to merge overlapping vertices. We have successfully merged two objects. Time to fill all holes and do some adjustments. One of the last steps is to extrude the eyebrows. Nice! It looks now pretty good. Congratulations, we did it! 
The only thing which bugs me is that the beard intersect with the body geometry. I will show you soon in a quick tutorial how to create vertex groups, so that you can easy select or deselect the beard. Next time we go ahead adding arms and legs. I hope I don't forget any information or shortcuts. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. If you liked this little tutorial, please give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for further tutorials. We love to creating tutorials, but we need as well some support. Become our patron and help us to help you. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again. Cheers.